thank you all for joining us on Zoom and YouTube, and we hope we would have a very engaging session. Uh, just before we get started, I would like to introduce some of the guests that we have on, on, on the call today. Uh, we have the CEO of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Mr. Oscar N. Oyema. And we also have Mr. Shep Okachos, who is the CEO of Dangote Cement PLC. We have Mr. Bismarck Rwani, who is the MDC of Financial Derivatives Company Limited. We have uh, Mrs. Uni Samson, who is the head of sustainability at Dangote uh, Cement PLC. We also have Mr. Miladi Adruja, who is the head of investors relations at Dangote Cement PLC. Uh, and we have the group CFO, Mr. Guyom Mayom, um, with us also. Uh, today promises to be very exciting. I would encourage you to please uh, leave your questions on the chat box as the presentation uh, proceeds. I would like to invite the CEO of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Mr. Oscar N. Oyema, and for the opening remarks. Mr. Oscar, Mr. Oyema. Well, thank you very much, Toby. Good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to today's facts behind the figures and sustainability report presentation by Dan Gote Cement PLC. On behalf of the council, management and staff of the Nigerian Stock Exchange and the entire capital market community, I welcome the board and executive management of Dan Gote Cement PLC and our guest speaker for today, Mr. Bismarck Yuwani, Chief Executive Officer of Financial Derivatives Company Limited to today's event. The NSC, as you know, has continued to remain resilient even in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic, leveraging various digital platforms and innovative technology to ensure business continuity and uninterrupted dissemination of information to the market. We are pleased that Dangote Cement PLC has chosen to use this platform to inform the market of its financial performance, as well as its strategic and operational developments. Given that the market is driven by timely, relevant, and accurate information, your constant interaction with the market through this forum is vital and we encourage you to continue with this trend. We commend the board and management of Dangote Cement PLC for their leadership in integrating sustainability into the core of their business operations. The exchange also commends the group's efforts in curbing the spread of COVID-19 and its recent interventions and donations to support national efforts towards cushioning the effect of the pandemic on the Nigerian populace. At the exchange, we continue to highlight the importance of sustainable business practices in delivering value to our listed companies, the investing public, and to support Africa's economic growth. We firmly believe that promoting transparency and transparent disclosure on environmental, social, and governance issues can help listed companies access the long-term sustainable capital that will enable them and the private sector to effectively play a key role towards the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. At the NSC, this is a journey that we also embarked on in 2013 by rolling out a sustainability strategy anchored on the four pillars of marketplace, workplace, community, and the environment. These pillars allow us to embrace sustainability principles in our operations, internalize the values as employees, and influence our ecosystem whilst remaining good corporate citizens. To further raise the bar, we joined the Sustainable Stock Exchange Initiative at the United Nations 
as well as the World Federation of Exchanges. In recent years, we launched the first Climate Bond Initiative Certified Sovereign Green Bond. We released the NSC Sustainability Disclosure Guidelines, which is mandatory for companies listed on the premium board. Subsequently, we hosted a sustainability reporting implementation workshop in partnership with the Global Reporting Initiative, GRI as well as, as a way of helping listed companies understand the NSC's sustainability disclosure reporting requirements. Last year, the NSC launched the Facts Behind the Sustainability Report series, styled after the flagship Facts Behind the Listings and Facts Behind the Figures events. Dangote Cement PLC leveraged the maiden edition to unveil its first ever standalone sustainability report. In June this year, the NSC hosted the inaugural virtual facts behind the sustainability report in line with its commitment to continually foster the growth of environmental, social, and governance disclosures across its ecosystem. The event was leveraged by a main board listed company to engage market stakeholders on their sustainability initiatives for the 2019 calendar year. The event was also headlined by Professor Ken Amaechi, Chair in Business and Sustainable Development and Director of the Sustainable Business Initiatives, who gave a presentation on how companies can create value through sustainability reporting. The exchange recognizes that listed companies are at varying levels in their sustainability journey, and we will continue to help them in actualizing their sustainability reporting goals. We will also continue to position ourselves as the African exchange of choice for issuers and global investors by implementing transformational policies aimed at strengthening the corporate governance of our listed companies, providing products that are aligned to investors' requirements, whilst also ensuring a fair and orderly market. Already, we have helped issuers raise about 50 billion naira in green and ESG compliant funding in the last two years. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the exchange redeemed its pledge to the Capital Market Support Committee for COVID-19 with the donation of an ambulance as well as 27 million naira. The exchange also launched the Mass for All Nigerians campaign with over 100,000 face masks to galvanize private organizations and individuals to provide face masks to, nine, to Nigerians across the nation, most especially the low income households. We are proud to have received commitments from several organizations, associations, and individuals. With the fast changing macroeconomic environment in Nigeria and globally, we encourage Dangote Cement PLC to continue to strive for sustainability by adhering to the highest standards of corporate governance. We believe that this will position the organization to attain deeper social impact, higher regulatory compliance, and more importantly, greater returns for shareholders. We thank you, the invited guests, for your presence today and encourage you to participate fully during the interactive session. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we now invite Dangote Cement PLC to make their presentation. Thank you. Um, thank you very much.
Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for joining Dangote Cement at our Facts Behind the Figures and Facts Behind the Sustainability Report. My name is Temi Adoroja, Head of Investor Relations at Dangote Cement. I would like to introduce our Group Managing Director and CEO, Michelle Pochekos, our Acting Group CFO, Guillaume Moyen, and Head of Sustainability, Eunice Sampson. We are all delighted to join you today. On the agenda today, the CEO will start off with a welcome address and outlook. Our acting group CFO will take us through the facts behind the figures. The analyst of the day, Mr. Bismarck Urani, will take us through his session. And lastly, Eunice will take us through the fact behind the sustainability report. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Before I begin, I just want to give you a short introduction on Dangote Cement and the purpose of the, the event today. As most of you already know, Dangote Cement is Africa's leading and largest cement producer with nearly 49 million tons capacity across the continent. Um, we have a production capacity of 32 million tons in our home market, Nigeria. Through our recent investments, Dangote Cement has eliminated the Nigeria's dependence on imported cement and has transformed the nation into an exporter of cement and clinker. After publishing our first sustainability report in 2019 regarding the 2018 results, in 2020, we presented a combined annual and sustainability report. This report is structured around the seven sustainability pillars of what we call the Dangote Way. This report links our financial and non-financial pillars of non-financial and non-financial pillars into a coherent whole that explains the company's ability to create and sustain value for shareholders. We will take you through what we have achieved on the financial side, operational side, and sustainability side during the last financial year and the year so far. I will now hand over to our Group Managing Director of Dangote Cement, Mr. Michelle Prichakos. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone here present, and uh, thank you very much for the introduction, Timmy. It is my pleasure to welcome you all today to Dangote Simmons' Facts Behind the Figures and Facts Behind Our Sustainability Report. We are always honored to be invited by the Nigeria Stock Exchange, and we are extremely proud of our strong ties with the exchange. We appreciate this opportunity to continue deepening public interest and knowledge about Dangote Cement. We are grateful to you all for your continued support in our business, particularly during these challenging times. At the end of 2019, the 2020 outlook was very positive. Aside from regional and international institutions planning for higher growth, the Nigerian government had put plans in place for an increase in infrastructure spending following the election cycle in 2019. Then the whole world was struck by the COVID-19 pandemic, which has posed a significant threat to public health and overall economic conditions. We have all undoubtedly faced unprecedented challenges since. It is a social and economic phenomenon that is affecting us all, professionally and personally. Some of the countries in which we operate experienced full or partial lockdown earlier this year or had various levels of restrictions and curfews to protect public health and safety. Dangote Cement has placed an emphasis on the health and safety of team members, customers, suppliers, and communities at large as a core value. We have implemented several rigorous protocols in all our operations across the continent to support public health and ensure the highest level of protection of our stakeholders. In addition, we are closely monitoring all markets according to the guidance provided by the authorities in each country to prevent and mitigate adverse effects of the pandemic. In this context, we continue to provide superior services and deliver high quality products to our customers. As Africa's largest cement manufacturer, we take our role of social responsibility seriously and have taken deliberate steps to deploy resources to help our communities overcome hardship in this crisis. Nogote Cement has spent close to 1.9 million US dollars 
in response to COVID-19 to ensure the safety and protection of our people, customers, and communities. In Cameroon, we donated uh, protective equipment, thermometers, and many more to the Ministry of Public Health and major hospitals in Douala. In Ethiopia, we made cash donations to the government, plus various donations, including face masks and sanitizers and water supply. These are just a few examples. While the world faces economic recession and downturn, we are fortunate enough to have had a decent start to the year as reflected in our first half financial results. This is indeed humbling for me. H1 Group EBDA was slightly up, supported by strong operating performance in Nigeria and Pan-Africa amidst COVID-19 challenges. EPS was up 6.3% at 7.45 Naira. We are fortunate to have resilient H1 2020 results amid the impact of global economic challenges. Cement is an essential building material with, with no viable substitute, and the global cement industry continues to grow, driven by urbanization, population growth, growth in housing need, industrialization, and infrastructure development, especially in emerging countries such as Africa, where we operate. We are presented with a huge opportunity and are strategically positioned to take advantage of these opportunities with our operational efficiency, product quality, modern facilities, strong human capital and technology to leverage our unique economies of scales and know-how. I'm also delighted to highlight the success of Dangote Simmons bond issuance of 100 billion series one fixed rate senior unsecured bonds, which is listed on the NSE. This was the largest ever corporate bond issues in the Nigerian debt capital market. The transaction was extremely well received and in fact oversubscribed. This bond insurance has been deployed as part of a 300 billion naira program, which was designed to finance the company's long-term high growth at the best cost. Part of our 2020 outlook was to begin exporting clinker from Nigeria to neighboring countries from our jetties in the Apapa and One ports. In June this year, we commissioned our Apapa port terminal and shipped clinker to West and Central Africa. We are extremely pleased to report this development in our business. This leads me to discuss our export strategy in more details. Our vision is to serve the whole of West and Central Africa with high quality and competitively priced clinker from Nigeria. Nigeria has a relative abundance of quality limestone, especially in the key thousand regions near to demand centers and export facilities. The absence of limestone in much of West Africa especially coastal states, forces those countries to import bulk cement or clinker from Asia or Europe. The Global Cement Report estimates that West Africa will import over 18 million tons of cement and clinker in 2020. Dangote Cement plans an export to import strategy to feed the West and Central Africa from Nigerian factories, exporting by sea and making the region cement independent. Nigeria can serve a potential market of 15 countries and 360 million plus people. This is another huge opportunity for us. In addition, it will be beneficial to the Nigerian economy in terms of export earnings and job creation. During the recently concluded 2020 virtual conference of the Nigerian Economy Society, themed Africa Continental Free Trade Area in Post-COVID-19 Era, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria stated that the African continent free trade area is expecting to bring about a number of benefits to producers, consumers, and countries alike. African producers would benefit from access to cheaper inputs and intermediate goods, as well as large markets for their products. We welcome the strong dynamic driven by the African continental free trade area, which supports our vision for West and Central Africa to be cement and clinker independent. We continue our efforts on sustainability and governance with our seven sustainability pillars, the Dangote way. The seven pillars, cultural, economic, institutional, financial, environmental, operational, and social 
provide the appropriate framework in which we have embedded our corporate values and strategic objectives. Driven by the goal of achieving the highest level of governance, the seven sustainability pillars are embedded in our corporate culture and guide our approach to create and sustain long-term value for shareholders. We also believe that measuring and reporting our activities transparently and consistently is a crucial component to constantly improving our on our role and impact in transforming our ecosystem. To achieve this, we continually invest in extensive stakeholder consultations, also internally, by which process we have developed our own customized framework towards sustainability. Our sustainability team will discuss this in more detail later in the presentation. In conclusion, I believe the future looks very bright for Dangote Cement. We have established a very strong platform for future growth and consolidation across Africa. We are on track to be a global leader in cement production, recognized for the quality of our products and services, and for the way we conduct our business. Today, I present our 2019 annual report and sustainability report to the capital market stakeholders. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all and the NSC once again for their ongoing support all these years. And now may I present Guillaume Moyen, acting group CFO to take you through the facts behind the figures. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for the introduction, Michel. I would also like to add my thanks to everyone for coming today and for your continuous support to Dangote Cement. It has been an incredible journey for our business and I am honored to be here to share some of our success stories with you. Dangote Cement currently has operational presence in 10 countries across Sub-Saharan Africa. We began our operations in Nigeria and have been expanding across the continent over the years. On slide five, you will see since 2011, we have been enjoying robust volume growth. To be more specific, we have been growing at a compound annual growth rate of 13.4%. The company has an outstanding financial profile and has achieved excellent financial performance during this period. If we look at the last seven years, for example, on the next slide, you will see that our EBITDA has increased by a compound annual growth rate of 9%. In addition to generating high growth, we also focus on distributing high returns and returning cash to the shareholders, notably through dividends. Dangote Cement has paid over 1 trillion Naira to shareholders over the past seven years. Looking at the macroeconomic environment, in which we operate. According to the IMF, Sub-Saharan Africa grew by 3% in 2019. In East Africa, we would like to highlight the high performance of our Ethiopian operations, where we have a 2.5 million ton integrated plant. In West Africa, Nigeria macroeconomic environment remained subdued in 2019 with fragile growth of 2.3% for the full year. However, Senegal and Ghana grew by 5.3% and 6.1% respectively in 2019. South African economy was muted with 0.2% growth. The South African cement market remained challenged due to imports having impacted negatively all local cement producers in a low growth environment. In 20 2020, like the rest of the world, sub-Saharan African economies are being affected by the ongoing coronavirus pandemic ramifications. The IMF forecast that sub-Saharan Africa GDP could contract by up to 1.8% in 2020. More specifically, the IMF and the African Development Bank expect Nigeria in 2020 GDP to contract by an average of 4.9%. South Africa's quarter two 2020 GDP declined by 51% and the IMF expect a decline of 8% for the full year country GDP. That said, uh, some of our countries of operation such as Senegal, Ethiopia, Tanzania and Ghana are expected to post GDP growth in 2020. 
Bengote Cement has sustained focus on supporting the Nigerian economy long-term growth, arguably, as mentioned by uh, my uh, colleagues earlier. Our biggest achievement to date has been to take Nigeria from being a large importer of cement to being self-sufficient and now to become a net exporter of cement. We are also developing road infrastructure and durable concrete roads. These initiatives are major economic catalysts and hugely beneficial for the country's transport sectors and communities. Bengote Cement takes part to the Road Infrastructure Development and Refurbishment Investment Tax Credit Scheme. The scheme is a public-private partnership which enables the Nigerian government to leverage private sector capital and efficiency for the construction, repair, and maintenance of critical road infrastructure in key economic areas. The benefit for participants is that they are allowed to utilize the total cost incurred as a tax credit against corporate income tax. Moving on to the next part of the presentation, we recently demonstrated our ambition to diversify the capital structure of the company with the popular commercial paper and bond programs. Bengote Cement successfully completed the issuance of a 100 billion series one five-year bond during the height of the lockdown periods in Nigeria and successfully completed in 2020 the issuance of 150 billion commercial paper notes at very competitive rates. Long and short-term debt issuances were significantly oversubscribed. It demonstrates the attractiveness of DCP debt for fixed income investors and our track record of successfully accessing the local debt market. As a reference, DCP's commercial paper borrowing rates decreased from 12% to 4% for 180 days commercial papers over the past 12 months. The latest CP issuances, series 17 and 18, led us to secure attractive borrowing rates of 4% for 180 days and 5% for 270 days. This is also very positive uh, for equity investors as the savings in borrowing costs support overall profitability and higher returns to shareholders. We are deploying a mix of short and medium term debt, namely bonds and commercial papers to optimize our cost of capital while managing liquidity. The board continues to consider all financial options accommodating liquidity requirements while supporting Dangote Cement long-term growth and value creation. On the next slide, now looking at our H1 2020 results and export strategy, uh, we would like to put another highlight in 2020 uh, as the commissioning time of our APAPA export terminal, from which we made our maiden clinker shipment to Senegal in June. This was a great achievement for us, and as Michel discussed earlier, the export strategy is a strong driver of Dangote Cement next growth phase. I will briefly discuss our H1 2020 numbers, which were resilient, bearing in mind the impact of COVID-19. Nigeria domestic volumes were up 1.8% despite the full lockdown at the end of March in major cement markets, including Lagos, Abuja, and Ogun State. Revenues were up 1.2% owing to higher realized prices mainly. EBITDA was only down by 3.1% to 194.4 billion owing to higher energy costs and adverse effects of COVID-19 on various dimensions of our operations. Our Pan-African operations achieved a record high EBITDA and EBITDA margin of 31.6 billion and 21.7 respectively. Sales were up 0.7% despite stringent lockdown measures in South Africa, Ghana, and Congo. Senegal, Cameroon, and Ethiopia operations continue to deliver strong performance we have also reduced our cash cost in six of our nine operations. So we can consider that we are certainly moving in the right direction in Pan-Africa. Our operations across the continent are reaching a new level of performance, and we are preparing to strengthen the value creation opportunities as an integrated Pan-African group with Nigerian roots. We continue building a premium value cement brand across Africa by entering the delivery of competitively priced high quality products. 
We believe that being part of the larger Dangote group is driving continuous value creation for Dangote cement and our stakeholders. For the third year in a row, Dangote has topped the Brand Africa 100 table of the most admired African brands in Africa. I would like to conclude the presentation by emphasizing the numerous benefits of our export expansion strategy in West and Central Africa. Investors often ask why we are expanding in Nigeria when we are not yet at 100% capacity utilization. As we export, our capacity utilization in Nigeria is and will increase. This in turn reduces fixed costs per ton and generate additional earnings for our Nigerian operations. We also expect benefiting from lower clinker lending costs in our Pan-African operations due to the proximity of these countries to Nigeria versus imports from Asia and Europe, while enjoying the benefits of being part of FECOWAS. An additional benefit is the opportunity to generate sustainable foreign exchange currency denominated revenues to support Nigerian operations, which require constant access to foreign currencies to source material and equipment. Longer term, we believe that the African continental free trade area will give Dangote Semen the opportunity to leverage high quality limestone reserves and production assets to serve African market, still importing cement and clinker from outside the African continent. The higher absorption of the fixed cost is expected to continue driving strong financial performance increase in Nigeria and abroad in the coming years. Thank you very much again for your time. Thank you very much for that wonderful presentation. Uh, next on the agenda is the analyst session, and I would like to invite our guest speaker. Our guest speaker today is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Financial Derivatives Company Limited in Lagos. He has more than 30 years experience as an economist, the banker, and a financial analyst. He's a, he's a chartered member of the Institute of Bankers of England and Wales, and also a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Bankers. He sits on the board of several organizations, including Guinness Nigerian PLC, uh, and you, you be a custodian limited just to make sure if, if, if you. Please welcome with me today, uh, Mr. Bismarck Iwani to take us through the analysis session. Thank you. Mr. Rwani. Okay, sorry. Um, can I, I start off all over again? I have 10 minutes to go through this presentation. Uh, I stand on existing protocols. CEO of Nigerian Stock Exchange, uh, Mr. Oscar Yema, the CEO of uh, Dangote Cement, Michel, and all others uh, here, here present. The theme of this short presentation is domestic champion to continental behemoth. And it's going to address a couple of things. Firstly, we're going to look at the regional context, which the CFO has done a lot of work on. We'll take a snapshot of the African, and then we'll look at the, the drivers of change in Africa, this continent, over the next 12 to 18 months in view of the pandemic overlay. We'll look at the cement and aggregate industry as it is in Nigeria, and we'll, we'll also share our thoughts with investors, what we call buy now and reap later. And then we'll have a summary and conclusion. Uh, I start off uh, by saying that the regional context of Africa, which Nigeria is the largest economy, uh, is a slow growth, but pandemic resilient. In other words, we are going to be seeing more of a, like a, a U-shaped recovery driven by the leading economies in the country. Um, this, is the, this is the way we see Africa and the 10 countries in which uh, the Dangote cement is actually represented. Um, Western and Central Africa have a population of 351 million with a, G a GDP of 1.1 trillion and a per capita income of $3,146. This is the real center of gravity of, of, the, of, of Africa. Uh, for Southern Africa, there's a population of 181 million 
a GDP of 563 billion dollars and a per capita income of $3,109. For Eastern, Eastern Africa, uh, for Eastern Africa, we see population of 351, uh, give me a minute, 350, 354 population million and GDP of 321 billion and per capita income of $906, uh, less than $1,000. But the strange thing is that uh, this, uh, this region is where we are going to have the fastest growth and more, most resilient. So even though today they have the smallest population, they have the smallest GDP and the smallest GDP per, per capita, but they have the greater resilience uh, because of many, many factors. Only four of the countries of the 10 that uh, Dangote is represented in are going to show positive growth in 2020 in spite of the pandemic. They are Ghana, Ethiopia, Senegal, and Tanzania. The average inflation rate across Africa is going to be about 8.6%. The highest being Ethiopia with 20% and the lowest being Brazzaville with 1.1%. So you have a mix of Francophone and Anglophone countries in the Dangote portfolio. Looking at the countries, you'll find that Nigeria is the biggest. Of course, we know the Nigerian story. It's in a recession. It's down by minus 6.1% in GDP Q2. It is likely to drop by another minus 3.5 to 4% in Q3, and probably a, a steeper fall in Q4. But averagely, we are talking about the World Bank says 5.4, IMF says 5.4% negative growth for, for the year. And the combined, the average of the ADB and the World Bank growth is showing 4.9% negative. Tanzania, uh, small economy, $63 billion, growth rate of 5.7%, and the inflation rate of 3.3%. So, and we, we see a capacity there of 3 million tons for Dangote. The other country, South Africa, which is really struggling, but we know South Africa has pandemic issues, they have power supply issues, and they have political issues as well. But we think it's a temporary phase, and South Africa will actually come out of this. Um, the, the other country in question is Ethiopia, which is a very interesting country. It's opening up, it's getting used to things and they are dealing with their power supply, especially with the new Nile initiative. So what does this mean? If you look at the, the African continent, the major exporters are South Africa, which exports 31.2% of total exports. Nigeria is 28% of total exports. Angola, 21% and Cote d'Ivoire 1.6%. In terms of imports, major importer is South Africa, 40%. Nigeria is 18% of total imports in West Af in Africa. Kenya, 5.7% and Cote d'Ivoire, 2%. So you can see there's a lot of concentration of economic activity in Africa. Of the 54 countries, the bulk of the activity lies with the top five or top 10. And if you look at that, the 10 countries which Dangote cement is uh, represented or has operations are the, the key drivers of the African economy. Now, what does African Continental Free Trade Agreement mean? It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an overlabeled cliche, but the truth is that yesterday, only yesterday, the Nigerian government started the process of ratifying this, uh, this act. And uh, it means that for goods that are with uh, source of origin within Africa, the maximum duty when it's going to be about 5%. Uh, right now, interregional trade in Africa uh, is much lower. It's only about 20%. As against Asia, where it's 60% of trade within Asian countries are within Asia, and 70% the European Union. But these are just early days because there are a lot of constraints for trading and actually uh, manufacturing in Africa. Now, the outlook for the region is an uneven recovery, like I said earlier. East Africa will register the comparative resilient performance with Ethiopia and Kenya being the springboards. The franc zone will have Ivory Coast, Cameroon, and Gabon, which will do fairly well with minus 3% in 2020 and plus 2.3% in 2021. In other words, a V-shaped recovery in the franc zone, supported by the French treasury as well. Central and West Africa, will contract by 4.3% in 2020 and expand by 2.2% in 2021. 
in 2021. So that's where the, the real problem is that it's 2021 that we're going to be seeing a recovery and so to some extent 2022. Southern Africa is a very, um, it's a serious case. It will plunge by 6.3% in 2020, modest recovery in 2021 uh, to minus 1.4 and then positive recovery after that. So there'll be uh, distinct and different performances for the four regions in Africa. Now, for Sub-Saharan Africa, the outlook, the region, uh, like I said earlier, will fall into a deep recession before recovering in 2021. Average inflation will increase to 8.4% in 2020 before easing in 2021. Fiscal deficits will widen on increased government spending and revenues. Uh, Sub-Saharan African countries uh, will experience labor market weakness and unemployment. As you can see already, Nigeria is already witnessing unemployment of 28% in Q2. And if you look at urban and demographic unemployment, it's about almost 54%. Um, in all, 36, 26 million people are going to, going to join the abject poor. And so of the additional 71 million people to be pushed into extreme poverty this year. So there's a problem of poverty, there's a problem of debt, there's a problem of growth, and then there's a problem of integration within Africa. So the external debt stock of Africa will increase to $631 billion in 2020, and 2021 rise to $665 billion. 40% of the low-income countries in sub-Saharan Africa are already in debt distress or at high risk of it, and multilateral lending to the region will increase sharply. Why is this important? It's important that we, we understand this because the Dangote Group is going to be uh, producing in these countries. We'll have to, you cannot be oblivious of government, the government situation. And if the government is, governments in these countries are in distress, then there'll be difficulty paying. But the good, the good news is that almost, almost all of these countries are in bed with the IMF and the World Bank and have access to multilateral uh, funding. Um, now, for the, the chart on the right tells you that real GDP growth will be 2.2% in 2021, but minus 4.1% this year. Population in the whole of Africa will be 1.1 billion people. GDP, GDP is $2.1 trillion. The GDP per head will be $1,880. Well, I've said already the inflation rate will go from will decline, decline from 8.4 to 8 percent, and the trade balance of Africa will actually decline from 12 billion dollars to 7.8 dollars. The current account will be in deficit, but the deficit will reduce from minus 73 to minus 63 percent. Total external debt will, go, will increase to 664, and the debt service ratio will be 13.7 percent. Now, what's the outlook? Sub-Saharan Africa will continue to be a fringe player in the global economy. After the twin shock of the pandemic and community market turmoil, COVID infections may spike, but fatalities will remain low. Why? The median age on Africa is 19.5, while the median age on the rest of the world is about 40 years. Economic recovery will be faster in East Africa, like I said earlier. And so now let me spend one minute talking about the industry overview. Uh, this is not for the faint-hearted. This industry is highly capital intensive. Uh, it depends on power and also depends on raw materials. The CFO and the CEO of Dangote Cement have said that. Now, there's fierce competition in an oligopolistic market. You can see the sector growth throughout over the years, and we've already talked about the um, Kaga of Dangote being 13 cent. Um, Dangote Cement in the in domestic market, Dangote Cement uh, has 48.6 capacity for uh, metric 48.6 million metric tons, while the nearest rival, Lafarge has 10.5 million tons and Boa 8%. So to all intents and purposes, Dangote Cement is dominant in, in Nigeria and a leading player in Africa. Why, one of the big challenges um, for big time manufacturers and capital intensive players in Africa is currency convertibility. Luckily, uh, both Nigeria, South Africa, and almost all of these countries are moving towards currency compatibility. And that's, that's a condition precedent for accessing World Bank and IMF facilities. So we are happy to see that, and that, that gives you a lot of upside as we go on. 
Dangote has all, in fact, you can see from the capital and debt structure that they front loaded their debt profile at the early stages when interest rates are low and will take advantage of this in the future. Uh, now, Dangote is, uh, like I said, domestic champion to continental bearing much. They've entered a field dominated by multinationals for over 50 years. They've taken leadership and established dominance. The five year Kaga, 13%, five year GDP growth compared in, to, in Africa is 1.24% GDP growth uh, for five years, while the um, Kaga of uh, Dangote is 13%. So it's at least almost eight times over, you know, above the GDP growth rate. Free cash flow of 98 billion in Nigeria and a return of capital employed of 26.9%. It's trading at any multiple of 11 times and it has a 70% share of market capitalization. I remember when Dangote was listed by introduction, the Nigerian stock market had lost almost 3 trillion Naira after the shock of 2009 and 10. Uh, so when they listed with 3 trillion, that helped to restore the, uh, the market capitalization back to where we started before the crash. So expansion strategy focused in West Africa, 10 countries and expanding into another four. The cement export terminals you know, uh, shifted from self-sufficiency to cement exporter, and I think also to global player. The clinker, um, CEO and um, CFO have already talked about, and it will take advantage of import dependent nature of most African countries. It will improve its sensitivity to forex risk, risk because it's a, you know, they're playing the perfect edge. So largest clinker importers uh, today or uh, exp um, China, Philippines, Ghana, Australia, and Cote d'Ivoire. Um, buy now and rip later. This is uh, a very important slide. The largest company on the Nigerian stock exchange provide ease in execution of investment decisions. Stock price has shown a lot of resilience compared to peers. It's diversified, uh, a major group in terms of the Dangote group have their fertilizers, have their refinery, have their petrochemicals. And definitely it will be the hub, refining hub of West Africa and Central Africa. And if you add that to the aggregates and cement production, it gives you a very formidable and defensive stock. The upside potential target price of 173 Naira and why it's about 134 today, and 28% premium to the current price. African countries, uh, post-COVID challenges for African countries and the Dangote source of competitive and competitive advantage. African countries are likely to embark on Keynesian countercyclical fiscal packages. They will most of them will request for debt forbearance and interest standstill from lenders. They will seek additional support from the multila multilaterals, IMF, World Bank, Afrexim, and AFDB. They will increase spending on civil works, construction, and affordable housing. There'll be interconnectivity of roads across countries because regional integration is not possible without uh, infrastructure and integration. So there's the single market aviation treaty for airlines so that you don't have what they call fifth freedom rights. So in other words, there'll be open skies agreement amongst African airlines. There'll be a trade agreement, and then there'll be the ECOWAS and WTO protocol, including the EPA. So all of this is, so just one thing, one, economies of scale, and two, uh, you know, it's, um, it's only for, not for the faint hearted. Now, post COVID challenges again, uh, we're talking about increased investment in power supply for these countries, which will help the Dangote investment, even though they are also always self-sufficient in their, in their plans. Um, greater transparency by African countries, accountability and democracy means that they'll be able to meet their commitments in whatever currency, because the currencies are going to be convertible. So Dangote Cement, Dangote Group will benefit from African continental free trade agreement. They have low cost of production, they have scale economies and they take advantage of the hub status for refining pipelines and road networks. So in summary, the economic recovery in 2021 and 2022 will lead to further industry consolidation. A lot of people will fall out. Um, but the leaders and the dominant players will remain and thrive. African countries are now accepting elections and democracy as a norm, as against coups and military intervention in the past. There will be international competition like Tata and uh, from India and from Asia, but I think that the Dangote group has the resilience and the potential to stave off competition. As a matter of fact, 
to actually begin to bite into international, international market share. Financial institutions with Pan-African footprint will also benefit from this. So it's not just Dangote Group, but you can imagine the ETIs, the standard banks, the UBAs, and all the other access and others who will also benefit and tag along in this uh, major story. Um, we, thank you very much. And we're proud to say that we are optimistic and happy to be the analyst for this event. Thank you very much, uh, Oscar Yema, CEO. Thank you very much, all, all others, for this event. Thank you very much, Mr. Rwani, for that wonderful presentation. There's definitely something for us to take away. Um, please note that you can please drop your questions on the Q&A chat box, and we'll take them um, immediately after the next presentation. Remember that we earlier said that this is a fact behind the figures and facts behind the sustainability report presentation. And therefore, I would like to invite Mrs. Eunice Samson, the head of uh, sustainability for Dangote Cement PLC, for the facts behind the uh, sustainability report presentation. Please note that we're very pressed on time and would appreciate that um, if this is done as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. In this session, I will be taking us through the first behind Dr. Smith's 2019 sustainability report. As a brand that was built on a vision to create sustainable value for stakeholders, Dr. Smith PLC is strongly committed to its environmental, social, economic, and governance responsibilities, and understands that these ultimately translate to business sustainability. We therefore align fully with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, and the call for all governments and institutions to take ownership of these goals, which are designed to address some of the world's most pressing challenges. As a responsible business, we understand the importance of working our talk by consistently improving on our sustainability performance and disclosing progress in this journey to our key stakeholders. This was why in May 2019, in compliance with the NSC's sustainability disclosure guidelines, Dangote Cement was the first listed company in Nigeria to officially leverage this fast behind the sustainability report platform. Now, let's review our 2019 sustainability reporting best practices. Our 2019 sustainability report is written in accordance with the reporting standards of the Global Reporting Initiative, GRI, which is the standard adopted by over 70% of the world's businesses in their sustainability reporting. While our 2018 report was standalone, this 2019 report is part of our annual report, a deliberate step that demonstrates the strong alignment that Dangote Cement is forging between its financial and sustainability performance. In line with GRI requirements, we carried out extensive stakeholder engagements and materiality assessment in 2019 to determine issues of major concern and interest for our key stakeholders, including host communities, employees, and investors. The outcome of these surveys and the one-on-one -on -one engagements that followed significantly influenced the material topics that are covered in this report. Also in 2019, we engaged the services of PricewaterhouseCoopers to carry out detailed independent socioeconomic impact assessments across our operations to ascertain the footprints of our business activities. This was done using globally certified input, output, and societal cost of carbon modeling. Also, to validate the integrity of data and information that we have disclosed, Deloitte conducted an external assurance on our 2019 sustainability report in line with the non-financial reporting assurance principles. The Global Reporting Initiative, GROI, also reviewed our compliance with their reporting standards and thereafter issued a certification stamp that was published as part of this report. Now, these layers of third party revalidations demonstrate the sincerity of our sustainability agenda. So how did we fare in our sustainability journey in 2019? Our approach to sustainability operationalization is defined by our seven Dangote sustainability pillars, which are institutional, financial, operational, cultural, economic, social, and environmental pillars. Now, what do these pillars mean to Dangote Cement? And how did they define our sustainability performance in 2019? 
Let's go through each of these pillars. First of all, our institutional pillar. This focuses on our strategies for driving corporate governance best practices, regulatory compliance, and effective sustainability leadership. In 2019, Davos Cement set up a technical and sustainability board committee to mainstream sustainability across its entire operations, demonstrating a strong commitment to continue building a world-class sustainable business. Also, as part of our institutional sustainability objective, we successfully integrated financial and sustainability reporting in the year under review, a reflection of our compliance with the balanced scorecard principle of sustainability that enjoins businesses to focus not just on their financial, but also environmental, social, and governance performance. Also, the DCP board is made up of seasoned professionals with vast experiences in the African and global business landscape. The board is highly diversified in competencies, gender, and nationality, with formidable representation of independent directors at 35.7%. Now, our financial pillar. This defines our principles for driving sustainable growth, profit, and excellent return on investment for our value investors and shareholders, as already seen in the strong financial numbers highlighted by my colleague. Our operational pillar. This defines our focus on operational and resource efficiency and commitment to promoting local content and patronizing local suppliers and vendors for sustainable economic growth. In 2019, Dangwazi Cement spent 284.8 billion Naira on local procurements, representing 66% of total procurements and up from 57% as of 2018. Our 2019 socioeconomic impact study shows that our patronage of local vendors generated 21,237 jobs and 66 billion naira in household income across our supply chain. Let's look at our cultural pillar. This defines our strategy for building a workplace of sustainability champions and stimulating active employee involvement in our sustainability journey while also empowering and motivating our workforce for sustainable productivity. In 2018, we instituted our annual sustainability week driven by employee volunteering and designed to mobilize staff to create value for host communities using their personal skills and competencies. The 2019 sustainability week recorded significant impact with 1,000 676 employees volunteering 11,504 hours on 63 different initiatives. Now, our economic pillar. This defines our principles for driving self-sufficiency and sustainable economic growth in the countries where we operate. Dangote Cement supports socioeconomic well-being in Africa by creating job opportunities, which in turn drive income generation for households. According to our socioeconomic impact study, in 2019, we created 54,000 jobs in just four markets, supporting the actualization of SDG 1, which is no, po uh, no poverty, and SDG 8, which is decent work and economic growth. Now, our social pillar. This pillar focuses on effective engagement of internal and external stakeholders, support for the health, safety and well-being of employees, host communities and the larger society, and effective measurement and continuous improvement of our socioeconomic impact. In 2019, Dangote Cement spent 1 billion, 108 million Naira on various impactful social investments in host communities, with nearly half of these going into educational empowerment and infrastructural development. Dangote Cement places high premium on educational empowerment. In 2019, 710 students were on scholarship in our Nigerian operations alone. Now, our environmental pillar. This pillar outlines our principles and standards for managing our ecological footprints. It also defines how we leverage the circular economy business model in mitigating the risks and optimizing the opportunities in climate change. In 2019, several of our plants innovatively utilized waste such as tires and plastic 
materials to generate alternative fuel, thereby reducing waste, minimizing operational cost, and also reducing our CO2 emissions. Dangote Cement is a member of the Global Cement and Concrete Association, GCCA, and subscribes to its sustainability principles and standards, which include best practices in energy consumption, environmental and social responsibility, circular economy, and health and safety. In 2019, across all locations, our total energy consumption at 79 million 176,174 gigajoules, reduced by 1.56% compared to 2018. Also, our scope one CO2 emission at 14 million 903,604 tons in 2019 was slightly down by 0.2% compared to 2018. We remain committed to leveraging operational efficiencies, top-notch technologies, alternative fuel, and the circular economy business model to continue to drive down our environmental footprints. Lastly, let's take a quick look at our COVID-19 intervention programs since year end 2019. Our chairman, Alaji Aliko Dangote, GCON, has been in the forefront of combating the COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria and several African countries. The private sector-led coalition against COVID-19, COVID, that he conveyed at the outset of the pandemic, has so far raised 30 billion naira in support of various medical and social interventions. Ali Kodangote Foundation contributed 2.5 billion naira to the COVID fund, provided two laboratories and 40,000 test kits valued at $1 million, refurbished thermal cameras at all major international airports in Nigeria, donated 16 ambulances and several vehicles for COVID-19 rapid responses in Lagos, Kano, and Jigawa states. The foundation has also distributed food palliatives, feeding 1.7 million households, which is about 10 million Nigerians across the 774 local governments in the country. In conclusion, Dangote Cement takes its social responsibility very seriously. Its unique seven pillar approach underlines a strong commitment to mainstream sustainability across the entire business functions. The fact that the 2019 annual report was structured along the seven Dangote sustainability pillars further establishes the importance that Dangote places on building a sustainable business and taking full ownership of its environmental social, economic, and governance responsibilities. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Mrs. Samson, for that wonderful presentation. Uh, we're really very pressed on time. So I would like to go, I would like to direct all of the questions to Mr. Poshakos um, uh, for answers. The first question I have is the company top line remained flat in the first quarter and second quarter of uh, uh, 2020, but the profit after lump this up to be the, another question still by uh, Mr. Nona uh, uh, saying, what is happening with your Asia leg, with the Asia leg of your business? What do you consider? Yeah. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'll just um, step in for Toby and just ask some of the questions. So the first question is, the company's top line remained flat in the first quarter and second quarter of 2020, but PAT in the first quarter dropped. Um, the person wanted to know what happened. The second question is, what is happening to your Asia leg of your business? What do you consider the optimal debt structure of the company? And um, I think those are the first two questions we'll be um, answering now. So I'll transfer those questions to our um, GMD, Mr. Michel Pichekos. Thank you for the um, questions. The Asian leg, uh, nothing has happened because there is no Asian leg. All activities of Dangote Cement are in Eastern Africa, Central or West Africa. For the other dimension or the questions, I will uh, hand over to uh, Guillaume, uh, Group CFO. 
Thank you, Michel. Very briefly on the top line uh, direction versus the bottom line direction, uh, as mentioned in the in the various presentations, um, the COVID-19 uh, environment has created various negative impacts on our operations. First, obviously, the growth around the demand has been relatively uh, mild, if not uh, decreasing during certain periods. And at the same time, uh, we mentioned the foreign exchange aspects of the need uh, for the business in uh, different comments. One uh, significant impact that we have seen is the, a lot of the energy costs that we uh, utilize are or through importations in uh, foreign currencies, and the pricing is usually pegged to US dollar, or direct pegging of the local supply that we get. For example, gas in Nigeria is pegged to US dollar. So evidently, when the currency is uh, er eroding against these foreign currencies, we have a negative impact on our bottom line. When it comes to the, uh, the debt structure of the company, um, we consider that currently we, uh, we are running a very, um, uh, let's say, prudent uh, structuring of our uh, uh, debt in, uh, in, in overall approach, considering that we, have, we are less than 50% leverage uh, of the, the balance sheet ratios that you can see on, um, on a consolidated basis or on a Nigerian basis. And as Mr. Rewani mentioned, we, um, we tend to uh, also upfront some of our needs uh, in an environment which is at uh, low cost at the moment uh, in the preparation of uh, potential changes in the future, but also to support our growth. Uh, as also mentioned in this presentation, we believe that there will be significant opportunities for the ones remaining at play with uh, strong muscles after this crisis. Okay, cement price in the Niger on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Will there be bonus in the nearest years? Uh, considering that most companies have scrapped this in their approach to investors. Guillaume, I will let this one to you as well. Uh, Toby, can, could you repeat the question? I was not able to uh, hear the entire content. Okay. Um, Adebola Oloyede is asking, please, what modality is in place for investors as regards Dango Tessimel price in, on the Nigerian Stock Exchange? Will there be bonus in the nearest year? considering that most companies have scrapped this in their approach to investors. Okay, the, the mechanisms we have in place to return cash to the shareholders are twofold at the moment. Uh, one is relatively traditional. This is the distribution of dividend. We've been uh, extremely uh, efficient at doing that over the years. And we have, uh, since last year, uh, started deploying a new mechanism, which consists in uh, enabling the company to execute a share buyback if the context allows it. Uh, we are still looking at this opportunity at the moment, uh, factoring the liquidity environment and also, obviously, the, the share price uh, of the company. Okay, thank you very much. Another question here. With free cement import by South Africa and China, uh, a big presence in road construction, what impact is this on Dangote Cement PLC? <clears throat> Uh, okay, I, road construction in Nigeria definitely is a, a huge opportunity the, and I'm happy to uh, collaborate with the uh, Chinese uh, uh, companies as we are doing now um, in either Nigeria or in other countries. The, in terms of uh, free import, uh, I have not heard much about these, uh, this news. Uh, I doubt the competitiveness of these, of these imports. For the time being, we're just uh, focusing on uh, opportunities of roads and especially road, um, concrete roads. Thank you very much. There's this other question. Uh, one of the things that was mentioned during the presentation, uh, could you talk more about the use of alternative fuels in your fuel mix? What percentage is it? And how far do you want to drive the source? How much cost savings can be derived from the use of this avenue? It's a, a very important question and totally linked to the topic of today, sustainability. Um, and it's a, a, a duty and I believe we are acting like a responsible uh, citizen in uh, developing these uh, technologies, aiming at uh, cleaning countries, cleaning Nigeria, cleaning Africa. This is uh, really what is at stake behind your, behind your questions. 
the technical details of how much uh, savings are, I would say, almost uh, secondary level. We are deploying a very uh, ambitious program, and you will see it uh, starting in the very uh, in the coming weeks, not only in Nigeria but all over Africa. At, at this stage, this is what we'd like to to share with you. Thank you for your understanding. Okay, thank you very much. Um, another question from Kasumu um, is asking, I would like to know the position of buying back shares, which was approved earlier this year. This would be another question for Guillaume. Thank you. I briefly commented on that. So late last year, the Dangote Cement Board enabled the management to initiate the effort to deploy a share buyback program. We got the authorization at the end of uh, January. Uh, and we are at the moment considering the opportunity to deploy this program, uh, considering the liquidity requirement of the company and the pricing of the share on the stock exchange. OK. Thank you very much. We have other uh, questions on the buyback, I, and I think that you've already addressed that. Uh, we have this question on uh, the sustainability presentation. Um, Dume Festos is asking, uh, with COVID-19 that caught up many, that caught many organizations unaware, are we expecting a shift in Dangote Cement sustainability policy, or you will continue with the 2019 template? I will ask Eunice to. Uh answer you, you need please. Okay, so thank you for that question. Um, we already have very strong uh, sustainability objectives that takes care of even post COVID-19 issues. Uh, our social sustainability pillar um, is focused on giving back and supporting host communities, even in these trying times. Some of the presentations that have been made by my CEO and my other colleagues, we have stressed the importance of host communities uh, as a business priority for us. And so beyond COVID-19, we will continue to support all our stakeholders, add value, and then get ensure that our stakeholders um, um, improve, continuously improve, support the improvement of the well-being of all our stakeholders. So COVID-19 or no COVID-19, uh, we remain focused on adding value for all our stakeholders. Thank you very much for um, that. Um, I think we'd have to take the doyen immediately after uh, market closes. And we are just one minute before time. And I would like to hand it over to uh, the CEO of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Mr. Oyema, to coordinate this session. Well, thank you very much, uh, Toby. Uh, and thank you very much to all of our panelists uh, for your wonderful uh, contributions. Uh, we're now very close uh, to the market close. Um, I would invite uh, Michelle uh, Pacheco, the CEO of um, Dangote's and PLC to do the honor. And We'll do the countdown and then oh, okay, that's it. Excellent. Uh, I always like to hear that sound. Uh, it means that uh, trading has completed for the day and uh, investors can now count their uh, profit and loss. Um, while that is going their profit, on- Their profit, not their loss. <laughs> their profit. <laughs> while that is going on, may I invite the doyen of the market uh, to make a few comments before we wrap up this session? Doyen, please. I think we. I, I think he. Uh, he had some challenges with his uh, connection, so he went offline um, a, a moment ago. Okay. All right. So we thank everybody for your participation. We congratulate uh, Dan Gottesman for stepping up once again uh, to lead the way in transparency, in sustainability, and in reporting. 
Uh, congratulations. And uh, that brings us to the end of this transmission. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, everyone.